Hello again everyone, this is Bob Martin with the Nautilus Dry Docks, the RC Sub Guy, back again. And I have a, a special submarine kit that I want to show to you, do a little bit of a review. Uh, it's a big beastie, hopefully you enjoy it. Uh, a 150th scale Russian Alpha class submarine from International Ocean Research up in California. A uh, big shout out to Michael there. So. I have not yet seen it. It's still sealed up in the original shipping crate. Um, I'm going to bring you on a little journey to crack into it, take a look and see what it looks like when you purchase a huge Russian Alpha submarine kit. Let's take a look. So before we open this up, I just want you to take a look at this uh, shipping crate. So this is um, 1 8 inch, uh, by the looks of it, uh, wood. You can see the corners are all smashed up and this is, uh, you know, pushed in. There's a hole punched uh, in the back there. This is just really kind of indicative uh, and pretty standard for the kind of abuse that a package undergoes as it's shipped. So again, as a hint or uh, tip for anybody who's going to be shipping, anything, uh, make sure it's adequately packaged. Fortunately for us, um, it looks like there was no internal damage or anything on this boat. So let's take a look inside and see what we've got to work with. All right, you can see the size uh, of the boat there. I'll give you the final measurement uh, after we get it out of the case, but it looks like it's extremely well packaged. We've got uh, several layers uh, of the big 5 8 inch bubble wrap. We've got foam uh, at the tail and again at the nose, which is really, really important. Uh, we've got a folder and we'll crack into that later and a box of parts. So let me set up a stand. We'll bring it out and take a look at it. All right, here we have it unpackaged uh, and ready to go. Um, I'm going to note that the very first thing that I noticed taking this boat out of the package was how incredibly light uh, this layup is. Like I am going to guess, you know, that this weighs maybe like two or three pounds altogether. It is so light. Now obviously that is a really good thing from a ballast tank perspective because as you know, the size of the ballast tank is really dictated by the weight of the components that you're trying to lift out of the water. So when this is exceptionally light, your ballast tank can be very, very small. You get faster cycle times, less energy used to move ballast around. Uh, let's take a look at some of the components that come with it. Um, some really cool uh, and comprehensive uh, assembly instructions. We've got a summary uh, of the boat. We've got reference photos. Um, and then it goes into assembling the boat um, start to back uh, in, you know, a fair degree of detail. Pretty impressive, actually. I like it a lot. Um, taking a look at what else is included, we've got a uh, stainless steel shaft with a big stainless bushing in there. Um, a mounting tube for the tail cone. Um, not exactly sure what it is. It looks like about a 1 8 stainless steel rod um, and a nylon bushing of some kind. Four of the, uh, you know, the flying rudders. Obviously two for rudders, two for rear dive planes. Um, all of these are completely identical, by the way. I'm not sure if that's 100% accurate, but certainly it makes production a lot easier. And it's completely possible that they are completely identical. Um, these were labeled as, um, I believe, antennas, but these are your periscopes. So it comes with five metal and resin periscopes with a, you know, a fairly high degree of accuracy and detail. Um, antenna array mounting bracket. So this is what the periscopes mount to, uh, apparently. Also comes with a sheet of Sintra board. Um, apparently that's going to be used during the construction process as well. Um, a big resin prop. I will say, um, just by eyeballing it, it doesn't look to be a thousand percent symmetrical. I'm sure, you know, it'll work just fine. It's got a very aggressive 
um, rake on those blades. It may not be a bad idea to try and source <clears throat> another, you know, properly manufactured brass propeller. Although again, you know, this is going to look, um, you know, just fine and it'll probably move the boat along just fine as well. Um, rudder yokes are also included. So these are manufactured brass yokes to control your rudders, dive planes to avoid that central drive shaft. For the propeller, we got some detail pieces, um, hatches and that kind of thing. Um, the rudder extensions and the rudder, he calls them rudder blades, but those would be the actual control surfaces inside the flying rudders. Um, creeper props, um, those go on the outside of the uh, <clears throat> dive plane extensions. And, uh, and then you've got your front dive planes in there as well. So one thing that I'm actually really impressed with this boat is the um, alignment inserts and the alignment tabs that come pre-installed in the boat. I'm going to show you what that looks like. It's fairly tight tolerance. You have to give it a little bit of a wiggle and then it comes apart nicely. And then what you've got on the inside are these plastic um, inserts that are bonded to the hull. Um, it's 1 8 inch uh, hard plastic. There's a little bit of like a bow to them. Um, obviously the fiberglass is going to try and move and this is going to help that from happening. The only thing I don't really like about this is obviously if you go to mount a cylinder inside, these supports are going to get in the way. So some separate um, arced bulkheads are probably going to be in order. Other thing to note is you've got um, a big blueprint in here that comes for assembly of the boat. Um, but taking a close look at this, I'll get this closer so you can see. That layup uh, is really, really thin. I'm gonna say it's about 3 sixteenths of an inch in overall thickness. Exceptionally light, exceptionally light. As you can see, looking at this, this is a huge boat. It's about 68 inches in overall length once you get the prop on the back of that. Uh, and it's a full eight inch beam. Um, so you can see I'm a pretty big guy and my fingers just barely go all the way across the entire thing. So you can easily put, you know, up to a six inch diameter cylinder in here. Um, I would say you're probably fine though with a, a three and a half inch. Um, reason being is that your ballast uh, does not need to be uh, excessively large because you've got such a light upper layup. The only thing that you would want to make sure is that you've got a motor in there of sufficient power and torque to drive that big beefy prop um, with that really aggressive rake to the propeller blades. Let's take a closer look at uh, some of the surface striving. I don't know how easily you can see that in the video, but uh, the, the surface details are in there. There is no um, anechoic tile striving, uh, which is perfectly fine, obviously. Um, but nice, big, deep scribing marks um, to make sure that those details are visible from a distance. Well, there you go, everyone. There's uh, my overview of the 150th scale Alpha Submarine Kit from International Ocean Research. Um, this is available on my website at thenautilusdrydocks.com. If you're interested, by all means, uh, go ahead, take a look, add it to your shopping cart. Uh, I don't think you'll be disappointed. Now, this is not a cheap kit. Uh, it's going to run about $1,000 or $1,200 for you. Um, but if you want a unique boat of a large size, this is what you are after. Again, this is Bob Martin, the RC Sub Guy. Thanks for joining me yet again. Uh, if you like what you see, by all means, subscribe to my channel. I put lots of videos out on a regular basis. Uh, if you want more information, resources, parts, kits, or components, visit my website, nautilusdrydocks.com anytime. Send me an email if you've got questions uh, or comments. I would love to hear from you. Bob at rc-sub.com. Thanks for joining me, everyone. We'll catch you next time.